welcome to the MBS Show Reviews. I am your host, Norman Sanso. Joining me today is Silver Quill. Hey man, I got some wings right here. That's good stuff. Comes from a guy named M.A. Larson. Oh wow, I heard you got good stuff, man. Especially his book, Penny Royal Academy, available on Amazon. Oh, wow. First hits free. Ah, <laughs> uh, no. And also joining us is Sapphire Heart Songs. Silver, give me back my wings. Seriously, <gasps> my. I worked hard to get these bullcrap wings. Give me. That's, sorry, it's free market now. <laughs> uh. Then I'll take them. It's been legalized in Colorado. Oh well, well now. All righty then. Uh, but with that, I'm guessing you guys can clearly tell that we're going to review the 25th issue of the Friends Forever comic, starring Twilight Sparkle and Rainbow Dash, written by Brenda Randall. Kelsell? Is that how you say the name? Bren- Barbara oh. Randall Kessel. Yeah, oh, Brenda Randall Kessel. Yeah. Is that like the Kessel run? Probably. <laughs> Can you do it in less than 12 parsecs? <laughs> I guess. Um, art by Brenda Hickey. Colors by Hedda Breckel. So the synopsis for this one is Rainbow Dash wakes up to... This is spoiler, right? Well... It's a summary, so really you can just list the initial mystery. Yeah. So, Rainbow Dash wakes up to her wings being gone, and she goes to Twilight for help, discovering that she has been robbed. Oh, no. Oh, no. It's even scarier than that. This is like waking up at a tub of ice with the <laughs> stitches over your appendix and a note saying, see a doctor. <laughs> Why do I have the image of the very bad doctor from Simpsons there? Hi, everybody. <laughs> and he's the responsible one. Uh, oh, my. So anyway, I'm guessing first impressions are in order. Silver, what do you think, man? My gosh, this is a dark comic. I mean, when you really boil down to it, this is some horrifying ideas. <laughs> Uh, there are several ponies involved, all of whom are more dangerous because of their naivete than their, their actions, and their actions are already horrible. In terms of a defense of, in some ways people have said, oh, this comic is making fun of all the Princess Twilight detractors. I would argue this is actually a very natural conclusion of, you've suddenly elevated a member of the populace to royalty, you, did you seriously think there wouldn't be any backlash? Some pettiness, some jealousy. That said, it's not necessarily a celebration of what makes Rainbow and Twilight great. So as a Friends Forever, it's really... It might have worked better in the main series than as a, a, a showing the dynamic between them. And Seppi, what about you? I really like this comic, even though it's horrifying and has, like, the most horrifying, dangerous ideas ever. <laughs> I thought it was a really cool story. <laughs> Especially since I don't really like Rainbow Dash that much, I really like this story. <laughs> oh wow, biasness. Okay. I'm I'm violent and insane, so I guess it makes sense. <laughs> All righty then. Uh... But I sort of I just enjoy this story so much. Mm. Okay, I'm good. <laughs> I I um... guess we'll go into like further detail. Mm-hmm. Those right. are my first impressions. All right. As for me. I was at awe, at shock, because we get to see a pony, the best flyer in all of Equestria, have her wings magically removed, and the adventure of her getting back her wings, but still, her wings, like, what? It's creepy and scary and uber violent and dark, like Silver said, but it's fun at the same time, too. I actually feel empathetic for Rainbow Dash in this episode because she lost her friggin' wings! Yeah. Like, how else would you react to something as terrible as that? Especially for how proud Rainbow Dash is of her wings. Mm-hmm, true that. To suddenly have that gone is just horrible in itself, and I love it! <laughs> <laughs> oh my. So, with that, I'm guessing we can... Uh, start reviewing this or start discussing it. Oh boy. So, everyone okay with that? Yes, let's yep. bring out the dark. Yep, yep. Bring out the spoilers! 
Spoilers, spoilers, get your spoilers here. Read all about it. Yes, and as per usual, spoilers are ahead. If you haven't read this comic yet, pause this video here. And, well, once you're done, continue on with us. So, we start off with a happy morning sun greeting Rainbow Dash with morning bliss. And, yeah, it's time for action and Rainbow Dash needs to fly. Yeah! She failed. She flew on a cloud and discovering that her wings are gone. Oh, no! And then Twilight also gets the same morning happy sunshine. Yep. Except... The only shock that she's getting is a visit from Rainbow Dash at the window. And Rainbow Dash asking for help because, well, Wing's gone and I need your help. Please find him. And she did with a scrying spell. Which probably means Twilight can never lose anything if she's got a spell like that. Mm, true that. <laughs> uh, with her finding her wings, we discovered that Three ponies, to be specific, unicorn ponies, took Rainbow Dash's wing when she was asleep. I have to bring something up. Why was Rainbow Dash asleep on a cloud, a random cloud? Because they're nice and fluffy. She lives in a cloud castle in the sky. Or maybe that's just where uh, Goldie Cap, uh, Decepticol, <laughs> and Zappity Hoof, they probably dumped her on a cloud and fl flung her away. Decepticult. It he's, makes sense. He he's more than meets the eye. <clears throat> oh well. And he wants to transform into an alicorn. With that, they have the plan of dissolving Rainbow Dash's wing. It's a complicated plan, but it involves wings being dissolved into a bottle and them drinking and having wings. Yeah, it doesn't make sense, but it's in the script. With that, our heroes try and find their wings because Rainbow Dash needs her wings in all caps. To be honest, they wouldn't even, like, as Twilight explains, they'd only become pseudo-alicorns. I wonder if they know that. There's always been this debate about our, our Cadence and Twilight elevated alicorns, but not true alicorns like Celestia and Luna. And now, so now we're adding, like, a third tier of alicornisms. Yeah, probably. Well, apparently... Luna and Celestia are on the same route as uh, Twilight and Cadence, according to friggin' the Crystalling, so oh, I guess a, that can be dropped out. That's a debate for another time. I will point the technicality that Celestia and Luna are pre-Equestria. Mm-hmm, true that. But apparently that means they were also some of the last-born alicorns. Until Flurry Heart. Mm -hmm. Until New Toy. <laughs> yes, indeedy. But anyway, Rainbow needs her wings, because those wings, having been soaked in the noontime sunlight, now have to absorb the twilight glow of the moon, and then their the essence is drained for a potion. Now, here's the terror of this. Once people know that you can make yourself an alicorn by taking parts from other ponies, you are going to create a black market of, of pony parts. You're going to undermine the very concept of harmony as ponies start viewing one another as parts towards alicornhood. This could undo a very real part of Equestria. When you put it into our society, everyone is a bag of meats with parts inside. Ain't that Repo, the, gen the genetic opera. <laughs> yes. But still, um, with magic this strong, I'm guessing that this is considered to be black magic or dark magic that is locked away in the vaults of the Forbidden Isle in Princess Celestia's archives. Are you kidding? This is probably on a library shelf. We've seen how little security ponies have when it comes to learning magic. <laughs> yes, that's true. I mean, Twilight had multiple copies of the Reform spell in the in the Golden Oaks library, and, and Sunburst had... Several force people to be friends spells, just chilling <laughs> on his shelves. These ponies. Oh, and you could get a, a, a love poison <sighs> spell from your local library. There's no security in this world. <laughs> they probably get a local dollar store. The, the ponies work on the honor code system when it comes to magical security. Yeah. So now, 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 you promised not to re, not to use dark magic. You, you made the pinky promise. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah. 
So anyway, with that, they are geared for action. Twilight camouflages them in camo paint, which is cool. Our ponies are covered head to toe in military camo. And Rainbow Dash's Rainbow Dash fails in jump and thump. Force of habit and Twilight teleports them to the scene of the crime. Where was this? Everfree Forest? It doesn't look like it for free. Hmm. No. Well, actually, I take that back. It does have so, a lot of the heavier drooping vines, vines yeah. and thorns. It looks more hostile. Mm-hmm. Probably. It could It could be Everfree. But with that, our heroines try and find the culprit. And lucky enough, next page, they do find them. And Twilight being the uh, cute lovable nerd doesn't realize that, well, they're invisible, but not their shadows. Uh, and they're not really invisible, but... Yeah. They're not invisible, but they're, they've they got camo. It's kind of like a perception filter from Doctor Who, except that Twilight really isn't thinking through... <laughs> it's funny. Twilight doesn't know how to use her wings properly still. Well, when this comic came out, um, Twilight still had trouble with flying. As far as I know, she still does. Yeah, true that. And Rainbow doesn't know how to work like an earth pony, so she gets caught. And this is... This is pretty sickening, as the three culprits talk about saddle-worthy withers, smooth shoulders, and a blank back. That's sadistic. It really is. Like, you steal her wings, and then suddenly you're making fun of her because she has no wings. Well, really? That's not a word. I don't care if that's not a word. They are. They are a bunch of... You know. Mm-hmm. Feed me your anger. No, you're not silver. You don't get that. Okay. Silver, you want to do it? That's just cruel, mean, and really, really cruel. With time passing on, the twilight emerge. Here comes the twilight. Yeah, twilight energy comes, and the wings are being diluted and dissolved into the vial, was it? Yeah, a little vial for a potion. Yeah. And Rainbow Dash here, like, her face here is crushed. And she's depressed. Poor her. Now she has to live her life as an earth pony. Oh no, what do we do? Well, basically, Rainbow has the plan. She's the mayor with the plan. They're trapped in magic nets, which apparently nullify alicorn magic, which... Wow. uh, I guess Celestia never got hit by one of those. (laughs) Granted, you need three unicorns to do it, but... And then Rainbow has the idea, let me control your body, since I know flying. So they pool their talents, and so all I'm thinking of is they've become Firestorm. Firestorm? A DC superhero who's the fusion of two minds in one body. What does he do? He can change the the atomic structure or oh, the chemical makeup of matter. That firestorm, I remember him. I just watched the Robot Chicken DC special. Yeah, him. Oh, God. He's cool. Perhaps not the most ringing endorsement, but there you go. <laughs> In a way, I feel like we sort of skipped a bit of the part, like the uh, little oh. tidbit between the three unicorns and uh, the one alicorn. Should we did. Check on we, that. To me, it seems like a completely manufactured argument on their behalf. Twilight's trying to say how forbidden this is, and they're like, well, you probably got your wings from someone else. What? No. How are you making that assumption? Yeah, I mean, how do you even know how she got her wings? Like, do you even? And I, I don't know if they were living under a rock or something, or if they're just trying to make that argument in their favor. I just... Uh, why? There, There is their argument, well, basically the jealousy. One unicorn got chosen to stand alongside the equestrian rulers. Mm-hmm. And even though there have been ponies who do exceptional feats, what makes her more special than everyone else? And it's funny, at a writer's panel at BabsCon 2014, one guy asked the group point blank, why does Twilight get this elevation? She's not more special than the... Pony who did a sonic rain boom or uh, tamed a, or reformed a draconicus, which eh, some people have argued this this 
these three characters are sort of straw men for Twilight's critics. <laughs> In fact, it's kind of funny that Decepticult has an alicorn for a cutie mark. Wait, he but does? I, yeah, it's hard to see, but in the panel where he says, are you sure? But really, they're not really exploring this. These guys are so clueless, and Twilight is not really putting forth a big counter-argument. So it feels like we're invoking the issue of Twilight's Ascension, but we're not really covering it. Mm-hmm. That's, that's the problem there, because we as the audience know how Twilight got her wings. It was through a series of trials and tribulations that she had to went through to get her wings. And if you remember the ending for season 3, she had to derp hard to mess up the cutie marks of all her friends and got them back to the rightful owners. And, well, Celestia said that, okay, you're worthy, so now here we go. Here's your wings. Amy Larson says so. And with that, she became an alicorn. With these three jokers here, we don't really know the pure motivation for them wanting to be alicorns, besides that being alicorns are cool. Of oh, social status. Social status. They they want to be recognized. But they're doing it for dishonorable means, as in stealing somebody else's wings, instead of working hard. <laughs> yeah, true that. But the thing here is... They found a spell that allows them to have wings. And what are the requirements of an elecorn? Wings and Destiny. horns. Destiny. Destiny. Yes. That's really what it boils down to. Yes, but wings and horns. So these jokers here, they say that, oh, we have horns. Now we all, all we need now is wings. Can we do that? Yep, we can. And poor Rainbow Dash here is the victim. But going back to Rainbow Dash's plan, let me control you. Every ship writer in the universe is going to write something about that. <laughs> so, with that, Rainbow Dash merged or got in sync with Twilight, and Twilight now can fly awesomely, like Rainbow Dash. Yay! And yeah, they're they're even talking like Firestorm. Two minds in one body. Two minds in one body. Uh, this reminds me of the Dragon Ball Fusion thing. Fusion! Because Twilight <laughs> Avatar State... Yeah, uh, that too. This is cool. Pulling each other's strength and joining into one. I, I wish they do that in the show if they have the chance. So anyway, we see Rainbow Dash and Twilight fusing and kicking the butts of the unicorns. But the unicorns are really smart and they put up a barrier around the vial of Rainbow Dash's wings. Here's my thing. Twilight has wings, but does she have the, her, does her body have the physical strength? To match Rainbow, and apparently she does, because she does a magical sonic rainbow. Yeah, sort of a rainbow. It's not a complete rainbow. It's missing all the cold colors. But yeah, pretty much. And this is the part of the comic that I like the least. Who? Having, having won the day, Twilight decides to punish the perpetrators, but then she says, I studied hard, learned well, made friends. By doing so, I earned my wings. My big gripe about this is that earning implies this was a goal for her. And Twilight never once expressed a desire to be an alicorn princess. The show sort of asks us to accept that, yeah, she, she, I don't question her worthiness, that she's done all these great things, she's done great work, she has shown herself to be a leader, but she was manipulated into becoming an alicorn. Celestia set her up hook, line, and sinker every step of the way. Mm -hmm. It's always sort of bothered me how little t choice Twilight has had in her own life. So now that she's sort of lecturing, oh, I worked hard for this. Twilight, you were played in a positive way for arguably the benefit of all, but you were played. True, but if you think about it with Sunset, she got played too, but well, the only mistake that Celestia did was reveal the mirror to Sunset. And Sunset was over-ambitious at the same time, too. And, yeah. Twilight here, on the other hand, was the perfect role model. And then Twilight went all Avatar on the Fire Lord Ozai ponies mm -hmm. and took away the magic. And that's the other part of this I don't like. One, uh, these guys should be in jail. Mm -hmm. 
they physically assaulted and mutilated another pony. And also a bearer of harmony. That's a big no-no. And she's like, your magic will come back in time. So that's more a slap on the wrist. And you'll have to walk home through what may or may not be the Everfree Forest. So who knows? Maybe they maybe they do die. Yeah. You yeah, remember that mental core from last episode? Mmm, yum, yum. Yum, yum. But, uh, yeah, I developed the taste for alicorns thanks to Trixie. <laughs> uh, but <laughs> this is so wag your metaphorical finger at these ponies. Tell them, don't do it again and let them go. It's like, no, this is a, a horrendous crime and once they get their magic back, what's to stop them from trying on a Pegasus you don't know? Especially since, like, at the end of their last appearance, they're like, that could have been us. We could have had wings. So, except some snotty alicorn princess messed it all up. So I think they would try again. Except maybe on Fluttershy. I don't know. I wouldn't be surprised. Honestly speaking, yes, that... That them doing this and the chances of doing this again are high, but knowing how the comic works, we're not going to see them again ever. No. Maybe not, but that's even more disappointing. You've introduced this, this element in Equestria that is not okay with the status quo, and this can be expanded upon, this can be a threat to Harmony, and... How do you go about reforming them rather than just a stern talking to? Why do they feel the need to be so acknowledged? What's the, what's their malfunction? And no, that's, that's character stuff. Twilight could show her best by counseling or, or rehabilitating them, but she doesn't. That's where it's disappointing, really. I mean, with the ending here after the rain boom, Twilight like string these ponies about You've misusing your magics for evil, so I'm taking it away and stuff like Twilight taking away their magic is step one. Now put them in the jail cell so they won't do it again and punish them because they did something really horrible and horrid. Especially to your friends who is an element bearer. That's not good. Mm -hmm. So anyway, we end this with, well... Rainbow Dash drinking the vial with her wings and growing baby wings and a full-fledged wing in 10 seconds flat. Yay! And then going back to Ponyville. Although, if you take away the word bubbles in that panel where, where Twilight is returning them to Rainbow, mm -hmm. take away the word bubbles. Does that <laughs> not look, look like she might actually be teasing him? Yep. This is surprisingly Wait, sadistic what? look. Okay, uh, the pa the page where, where Dash's wings are restored. <laughs> mm hmm Ver Very first panel. So da Oh, so I know. So like, if you give take me, give me it right now. No, I'm, ho I'm, I'm tormenting you. <laughs> Torment. <laughs> <laughs> okay, that's pretty funny in comparison. Yeah. So that's just me adding my own brand of horrible. Yeah. If you take a look, see at the, third panel where Rainbow Dash is growing her wings just imagine that they're not growing in Tyson flat, just imagine that they're growing really really slowly, you'll get Deadpool <laughs> it's like tiny baby hands <laughs> 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 uh, yeah so anyway with that we get to see our heroes go flying back to Ponyville and yeah they have a race yeah <laughs> You want to stress out those wings, eh, Rainbow Dash? After getting them, you, you don't want to go easy. Hmm, all right. And proving that Twilight can fly as fast as Rainbow Dash. Yay! Well, basically, she's gained an appreciation for the power of flight. A need. A need for speed. I feel I actually need. ironically used to um be in a 4-H group, and the main slogan for my uh group's uh, horse... Racers were need for speed. <laughs> that that seems fitting. And with that, our comics ends. I think final thoughts are needed. Silver, what do you think, man? Oh, we we got through this pretty quick because there's not a lot of depth here. Mm -hmm. There are dark ideas, but the consequences aren't really fleshed out, or the bigger threat is never stated. 
yeah, we want Rainbow to have her wings back because that's so much of who she is and what her future is meant to be. But the greater consequence as to what this could unravel within Equestria is Twilight never even realizes it, never brings it up to these villainous ponies. Honestly, I feel like there's a bigger issue here that goes sort of ignored. So this is kind of just an action flick in many ways. Here's the bad guys. We need to thwart the bad guys. We are losing to the bad guys. Okay, let's team up. Now we've beaten the bad guys. Well, that analogy just made me realize why I even like this comic. Because there were bad guys? No, the action analogy. Action, action, action. (laughs) Honestly speaking, it's not bad. Having an action flick is good. But the threat that you're giving here is one of, oh no... The bad guy has a nuclear weapon. He wants to detonate it within the 24 hours. What do you do? Bing, deep, bing, deep. And yeah, at the end of the day, ha, huh, you bad guys are so dumb. Slap on the wrist. We're taking away your wheels. You have to walk home. Ha, 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 ha. When I get home, I'm going to get another nuke. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so that, that's the thing here. I mean, you introduce something horrid and... This is what you're giving us? Eh. Sorry, Silver. Uh... Yeah, I've about said my piece. It, it, Twilight gains an appreciation for Rainbow's athleticism. Rainbow, I guess, appreciates Twilight's magical ability. I think. Doesn't really say anything here. But uh all in all, I can't say I, I gained any new appreciation. I knew Twilight was a great magical pony. I knew Rainbow was a great athlete. Big on action, low on character for me. Mm, But did you like it overall? It was decent, but not my... I would put it in one of the the middle-of-the-road comic entries. Seppi, what about you? Well, for me, I I enjoyed this comic, and I think I figured out why. Because I'm going to be all honest, I only read this comic once. Because, you know, I've been really busy and whatnot. That and no internet for a whole week. Thank you, Father. I just figured out I'm an action junkie. (laughs) Welcome to Princess Cadence Adrenaline Junkie Club. No, don't you dare compare me to Princess Merchandise. (laughs) Oh, come on. If she were an adrenaline junkie, she'd be way more interesting. Yep. Oh, yeah. Once again, don't compare me to Princess of Merchandise and her little baby... Okay. (laughs) Wow. (laughs) The hate is strong with this one. Yes, get get more rage for... (laughs) Uh. This is apparently why I'm so violent. I'm an action junkie. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> I really don't have much to say. I never really do have a lot to say when it comes to, like, the comics hmm? and sometimes episodes because I don't usually, like, I don't think a lot when it comes to uh comics or, hmm. you know, the show itself. I try not to think. I try to enjoy what it is unless there's something that's blankly there or something I don't see. And considering I only read this comic once because there wasn't really anything that engaging for me to, like, read or look over again, I guess I just don't have that much to say. As for me, I enjoy this comic in an action flick kind of way. One of the few things I enjoy about Brenda Hickey's art is she knows how to do action scenes. She knows how to do that pow in the art. She does good work like that. And what I really like about this comic is the subtle way that it tells the whole day from day to night. You don't really notice it until you, well, you really, really look at it. Because we start out the morning with them in bed, discovering where the bad guys are. That should be around noon. And then them being trapped in the net, that's somewhere around the twilight time, around evening. And then... We end the comic with them being at night. And that's cool to me. Like, that puts a lot of thought into how you're going to draw this. And other than that, I don't really like the villains in this one. Like I mentioned before earlier on, the implication of body part stealing, turning into other things. Like, 
That is no, a lot of no's. And with Twilight punishing the ponies with a slap on the wrist, as they say, it's nah, ain't good. But with that, that's my thoughts on this comic. I'm guessing that's about it. Well, that that's the long and the short of it. I mean, yeah, sometimes you just want an action adventure <laughs> fight scene. Goodness knows, a Candlelight Wedding was celebrated for uh, seeing the main six beat up a changeling horde. True that, or the end of season five where we get to see Goku fight. Yep, we get to see that. That was the best part when I first saw it. <laughs> yep, we get to see Princess Twilight Sparkle transform into a super <laughs> alicorn and beat the crap out of Terek. Yay! That was- it was my favorite season finale. <laughs> beat him up, beat him up, beat him up. Yep, yep. Yes. So anyway, so next week's review, we're going to do Newbie Dash. Do we have to? Yes, we do. Season 6, episode 7, overall episode number 124. Uh, written by Dave Polsky and Dave Rapp. Huh, okay. Written by yep. Dave Rapp. If it turns out wrong, then you could say you got a bad rap. <laughs> so Dave Polsky lost his touch, I swear. Oh, Dave Polsky was involved with his story. Dave Rapp was the one that write this whole thing. Oh, God. Yep. Well, now I know who to blame. <laughs> but anyway, uh, we'll go in depth with our thoughts in next review. Probably we'll have a special guest who has been in this kind of situation before. Maybe. You don't know. We hope so. Oh, no. Silver hide me. <laughs> the subtlety is not strong with this one. Indeed. Maybe. I, I I don't make any promises. I need to get in touch with the guy. If he is okay with it, he'll be here. If not, hey, you got us, right? For shizzle. Yo. All it. <laughs> Silver hide me. <laughs> so, straight up. I'll, straight up, I'll be it. using you as a flame shield when he blows up. <laughs> Straight up, Doc, you can hide at my crib. Yo. It's tripping. I got sick bling. <laughs> uh, with that, we'll guys catch you next week with another amazing episode of the MBS Show Reviews. I have been Roman Sanzo. I have been stealing pony parts. <laughs> oh, God, no, don't do that. I'm the person he stole the pony parts from. Give it back. We'll work out a trade. <laughs> and we'll guys catch you next week. See ya. Adios. Bye-bye. I'll trade you your first edition comic of IDW Transformers for my wings. Got a deal? I, you have to speak in a bonnet for the next review. <laughs> deal. <laughs> All in.